today compared to 50 years ago is enormously different. It was a sleepy little border town, a very quiet, uh, uh, very calm. Well, Brownsville has always been very poor. It's still true. Uh, but back then, uh, it, it looked like it was poor, and the college looked like it was poor. It was a, a little community college a block from Mexico. Uh, struggling to meet the needs of a very fast growing population and having a bit of trouble. But the Hispanic people were really being neglected as far as their education. About 50% of our population does not have a high school diploma. If you wanted a degree, uh, you had to leave Brownsville. Those students that graduate from high school, the majority of them, not 90% of them, cannot afford to leave Brownsville. I became a board member at TSC because of a very dear friend, uh, Jean Eckhoff. Well, it was, that was in 1986, and two years after Mary and Michael had been elected, Jean, of course, was still on the board, and then I had been named president in February. And so that year, uh, we had finished a master plan. How is it you said that you learned? Scholarship money, and uh, set up a wonderful endowment for students. I think. Uh, we have given over one million dollars in, in scholarships and, and uh, it's been very successful. My name is Janie Yanas. I was born in Mexico and I moved to Bronzeville when I was about 12 years old. One of the things that enabled me to come to the university was uh, financial aid and the endowment hours. I am the first uh, person for my family to attend the university. I'm first generation and they are really really proud of me and the fact that I was able to continue my education past high school. Community colleges have a different philosophy. The idea of a community college is we're going to serve our single town or and its environs and we're going to have open admissions. Everybody who wants to come can come. The university is different and it tends to be exclusive in its selection of students. People compete to go there. There was no way we were going to move this province into the center of things without having the full academic power of a university. So we said there's gotta be more for students here. If we can just experiment, what it would take to keep those characteristics of a community college that are so important and blend them to the strengths of a university, then maybe we can create a new model for what is really in the market. The following year, Mary Rose became chair. We will table that and then we will, oh, fine, thank you, not a problem. And uh, that's when the negotiations with the University of Texas began. She and I and others uh, went to Austin and met with the chancellor at that time. So uh, he was talking to Mary, we were chatting, and Mary finally pled our case. And he said, well, perhaps in about 20 or 30 years, we'll think about doing this. That is, extending the access to higher education or putting the university here. Mary, who had never sat back in her chair the entire time, sat on the edge of her chair, almost went for the jugular. But she said, uh, we do not have the luxury of waiting 20 or 30 years. Didn't you hear what I said? We all froze because we thought it was like a clash of the tent and titans and it was going to be all over. I get a call at the bank and it's Hans Mark. And he says, Bobby, do you know Mary Cardenas? And I said, certainly Hans, I know Mary, I've known her all my life. What do you need? And he said, well, can you tell her to back off? She's putting too much pressure on us. And if she'll just back off a little bit, I think we can get this done. And I thought about it and I said, Hans, the only way to get Mary to back off is to say, okay, Mary. <laughs> and I think that's what he did. <laughs> we got our university. She's just that type of person. You cannot, you cannot tell her no. She'll just stay there until you give her a yes. Well, it has made an, an enormous difference because it has given our kids the opportunity who before didn't have the means to get a degree. We are now 10 years old as a community university. We've had 10,700 graduates. Well, you, you uh, inject in a community like this 10,700 graduates and you feel the impact. 
economically it's made a big difference because uh, the kids who before might have gone away have decided to stay home. And not only have they stayed home to get their education, but they've stayed home to go to work and, and have their family. And so it's created a, an enormous uh, boom uh, for Brownsville economically. When I moved back here, it was just exciting to see. I ran into the grocery store um, into um, friends that I hadn't seen in so many years. And they're like, I'm in college now. I'm attending school. And many of them would thank me, say, tell your mom thanks. Tell her thanks for making UTB TSC possible. I think she had more impact on the community than anything else that she's done. She sits on the Federal Reserve Board of San Antonio. And that's, a, that's once a month. And then she sits on the board of the local public radio and TV station. It's, uh, it's Boy Scouts one day. It's United Way another day. It's scholarships every day. You asked my father, I'm sure he said he's, she gives more time to all her civic involvement than she does to the business. All of them, yeah, she's also uh, uh, involved with the Driscoll uh, Children's Hospital. One thing I'd like to, to comment on, and, and maybe others have, but Mary and Ray form a, a, a wonderful partnership. And to know Mary, you kind of have to know Ray too, because the two of them work together. We work as a team in our business and in everything we do. And I do help her a lot in some of the work that she does, mainly by driving her to those <laughs> meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Rose is a legacy. The name Mary Rose to me means, or I interpret it as, a person with a vision, a person with a vision on education, a person with a vision in, in, uh, in academics, uh, a person that is involved in the community, a true leader. Uh, because you don't have to ask Mary Rose. Mary Rose does what, what she believes in, and she believes in, in community involvement, and that she is. I think that every hour she spends at her work is about trying to affect some number of lives so that their lives and their children's lives and their grandchildren's lives will be better. Her legacy will be never ending. The University of Texas at Brownsville, that is her legacy. It exists. It's here. It will never go away. Uh, UTV TSC provides a way out of that vicious cycle of poverty. And um, her legacy will be that she gave them a chance. I would think that uh, her legacy would be that she was a mother to the whole community, to all our children. I think it'll be the sense of, um, of uh, a public service, how important it is uh, to be involved in something much bigger than yourself. And she's taught us all. Outstanding service in college and university trusteeship is hereby conferred upon Mary Rose Cardenas, esteemed trustee of the University of Texas at Brownsville and Texas Southmost College, respected for her well-reasoned approach to problem solving, a strong and trusted innovator, 
a clear and consistent voice for progressive change whose profound vision has helped guide the university in developing its long-range plans. Effective institution and community advocate, defender and friend, a courageous and inspirational leader, a committed volunteer and philanthropist, a model trustee, and the proud grandmother of that seven month <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. My heart is filled with gratitude for this honor and for all those who considered me worthy of this nomination. First, I'd like to thank Dr. President Judith Garcia, Dr. Wayne Moore, the Vice Presidents and the staff whose care and trustworthiness has made it possible and easy for me to serve. University of Texas at Brownsville, Texas Southmost College, an institution with a great mission for people that need it. Brownsville, Texas is my home, and the community support is strong, but never taken for granted. To my fellow trustees that are here with me tonight, Rosemary Breedlove and Eduardo Campinano, I commend your great work and appreciate your dedication. To the Association of Governing Boards and the members of the Selection Committee, I am humbled to have been chosen for this honor. I will always treasure being named among such distinguished group of trustees who give their time and talents for their universities and colleges. I am more than grateful that the Association of Governing Boards has given me another opportunity to show my grandchildren that serving one's community is appreciated and valued. To my husband, children, and friends, thank you for sharing this moment with me and for your support in all that I have been blessed to do. In closing, there is no great secret to succeeding as a trustee, whether you serve two years or 20. It is presence and communication. Being there, listening, and speaking up are necessary to help all of higher education achieve their mission. May good fortune be with all of us in this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you.